Some people say that the diet that crushes diabetes is unsustainable. I say it can be very sustainable, and I'll give you four reasons why. All right, here is another comment. This person says, I lost weight by sheer willpower by following the Weight Watchers program many years ago. I had to count points, etc. Eventually, the weight all came back because it was not sustainable. He puts in parenthesis a common criticism about low-carb diets. <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, many people say low-carb is not sustainable. Somehow, this individual says, after going low carb, I just eat without paying much attention to calorie counts. My blood sugar is way down, not just down, but way down, as is my weight. I don't have cravings to fight like I did on that other program, which absolutely encouraged low fat eating. Well, that is part of the power of the low carb, uh, high fat diet is that you just stay fuller longer, and it doesn't take as much to keep you full. He says, so now I'm waiting for this, no, this uh, non-sustainability thing to kick in. It seems like I may have <laughs> a long wait. Well, I'm with you, my friend. I, I must have a long wait, too, because I've been at this almost 20 years, 19 years, I guess it is now, and uh, it still hasn't kicked in. I, I do not find this unsustainable at all. You know, there are some things in life we have to fight all of our life just to keep a lid on it. Some people have a problem with temper, and they have to fight it practically every day just to keep civil with people and not lose their temper. And some people have a fight with sexual temptation, and they have to fight it and, you know, by God's grace, overcome it uh, every day. But this thing about the... Uh, low-carb diet and the temptation to eat carbs and sugars, I can't speak for others, and I know there are some that do seem to have to fight this, but it's never been much of a fight for me. Uh, it just seems to come pretty natural for me, and, and I don't ever really feel tempted to go back to the old way. And I, as I thought about this, I wrote down four reasons. There's probably more probably more than that, but here are what I believe the big four reasons for me. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. Number one reason I don't have to fight it very hard and I don't feel strongly tempted to go back to the other way of eating is I enjoy nice meals. I have a nice diet. I am not at all feeling deprived. I know it might be nice to eat some french fries sometimes or a banana. It's not that I'm not cognizant of the fact that there are things that I'm missing, but there are so many good things that it just doesn't feel like I'm being cheated. I never have the sense of being cheated by eating this low-carb way. And of course, a part of the reason I don't feel cheated is I know what I'm doing is basically just eating the way people have eaten for thousands of years. Man has, it's only really been recently, relatively speaking, that, that men and women have been just jamming their bodies with junk and carbs of all kinds. I mean, how long have potato chips been in existence? Not for thousands of years. If you went back a thousand years, you wouldn't find any bags of potato chips in the stores or markets or shops anywhere or candy bars or soda or any of the other things. So I'm basically just kind of returning to a more of a normal diet. Anyway, number one, I think one reason I, I don't feel tempted to go back is I enjoy nice meals. I, I even have a sweet little keto type desserts, mug cakes and strawberries and sometimes blueberries, and sometimes a chocolate cake with some nuts on top and a little whipped cream. Uh, I'm not deprived. I maybe don't have the variety that someone would have who eats a standard diet because a standard diet basically says it's all legal, it's all lawful, whatever I want, I get. But who in the world ever told you that that should be your rule of life? and should should be the goal of your life, to just eat everything you want. I mean, that produces monsters when we do whatever we want. 
There is such a thing as self-control in our life, in the way we behave ourselves, in the way we treat others, and in our diet. So self-control. Um, so number two, a second reason I just feel like uh, I'm not tempted at all, really, to go back to the old way of eating. I know the damage it will do. I mean, I've studied this. I've heard testimonies. And in and, and that, I have an advantage over some because I, I interact with diabetics all the time. I hear about um, some of the things they go through. Or some people will tell me about a, a, a mother or a father or an uncle or an aunt or a grandpa who lost this leg and had this terrible thing happen to them. And I'm so keenly aware of the damage diabetes can do. I mean, it is a killer. It is a maimer. It is a destroyer. And I'm very much aware of it. So when I see a piece of chocolate cake with ice cream on it, or when I see a bag of chips or a big mound of rice on somebody's plate, my feeling isn't, oh, I wish I could have that. My feeling is, yuck, how can they eat that stuff? And of course, the answer is they, they just don't know the damage they're doing to their bodies. So, number one, I enjoy nice meals. Number two, I am aware, very much aware of the damage I would be doing to my body if I did go back to that lifestyle, that diet. Number three, I can see the results of my blood sugar on my blood sugar meter. I get it in whole car, uh, whole, uh, what am I wanting to say? I, I get those results in cold, hard, factual numbers. I eat a meal. I wait an hour or an hour and a half after the meal. And I see a 115 and I smile. I'm happy. I'm, I'm thrilled. Once in a while, it won't even hardly budge above a hundred after a meal when it's a really low carb meal. But if I ever decide, well, I'm going to try an iffy food, or if I do something for YouTube where I know it's not going to be good. And then I look at my blood sugar meter and it, it says, uh, 195, 215, I, I'm disgusted. And I'm like, well, I did it for YouTube once. I won't be doing this anytime soon, that's for sure. And by now, there aren't too many surprises. Once in a while, I get a little bit surprised, sometimes pleasantly surprised. The other day, I made myself a low-carb biscuit, threw some gravy on it, and uh, an hour after eating it, I was like in the 80s. It basically, my blood sugar hadn't risen at all, and I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting to at least be up into the low 100s, and I didn't even get into the 90s. But anyway, the meter convinces me I, what I'm doing is right. It's good. I see those numbers, and the, the high numbers make me want to avoid those kind of foods, and the low numbers make me want to just go after those kind of meals and foods all the more. So the meter is a powerful motivation for me. And then fourthly, when you lean toward higher fat meals, you're more satisfied. You don't find yourself with food cravings. You don't get hungry all that often. And that just keeps me in, on the straight and narrow, just the feeling of satisfaction. If I was hungry all day long, it would be hard to sustain that kind of a diet. If I was just hungry in the morning, hungry in the afternoon, hungry in the evening, go to bed hungry, wake up hungry, if I was just hungry, 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 and saying, well, praise God, I'm on a nice diet that's going to keep me healthy, but I'm hungry all day long, all night long, uh, it would be hard. I will admit that, but I'm not. And I don't even have to eat that much to be full when I'm eating low carb and high fat. It just doesn't work that way. You get a sense of satisfaction, a sense of fullness. And uh, as a result, again, I'm not tempted to leave this kind of a diet. So between those four things, number one, uh, nice meals that I enjoy. Number two, I know how much I'll hurt myself if I do indulge in a high carb, high sugar meal. Number three, I can see in the results on my blood sugar meter, and that's a motivation. Number four, I'm satisfied pretty much all day long. I'm just satisfied. Uh, I'm not hungry. I'm not starving. So as a result, I'm just not, I, I just don't feel any big temptation to go back. 
I want you to know that I do have another YouTube channel. It's called by my name, Dennis Pollock, and on this channel, I teach the Bible. I do short little six and seven minute devotionals normally on all kinds of Bible topics. If you're having a rough week and need some encouragement, or you just want to know what does the Bible actually say, you need to check out my Dennis Pollock Bible channel. There'll be a link in the description below.